Hey guys, it's your girl, Briella. So I'm back with another video, and this is how I created these accent chairs. So this is actually part two of a DIY upholster of chairs that I did. Stay tuned, guys. Hi guys! So as you can see I bought some cloth from Joann's and basically I am attempting to re-upholster over my old worn out chairs. So what you'll see is that you need a stapler. I use this Dewalt stapler. It's actually pretty nice in regards to the power that it has when you press on the lever to squeeze the staples out. So basically, as you can see, what I'm going to do is I am folding the cloth up so that it's horizontal. And I'm going to actually use the horizontal side because it has more length and I'll be able to uh, use all of the cloth in regards to putting on my chair and I'm not having a significant waste as I would have probably not enough cloth if I use the vertical leg. So what I'm doing is I am fitting the cloth over the chair with the fabric print on the outside, as you can see, and I am basically tucking in the cloth into the chair and making sure that it fits in that crevice where the two chairs meet. It is going to be a little bit loose in the beginning, but as soon as you staple the chair and the rest of the cloth uh, to the back of the chair, basically it will stay and it won't be as flimsy and loose to be pulled out. As you can see, I am cutting about two inches away from the end of the chair, and I will use the scrap from what I cut off to cover the bottom portion of the chair. So what I'm doing is straightening the cloth as best as possible and tucking it in the crevice of where the two chairs meet. So what you'll do with that excess portion that I just cut off, you will place it on the chair for the bottom portion. And what I'm doing, I'm just folding it up and putting it in a safe spot for when I have time to get to it. So as you can see, I am still trying to tuck in and straighten the cloth as best as possible that I can. You want to really take the time to make sure that you are creating a smooth appearance on the chair. So what you'll see is I got these staples that I will place in the Dewalt stapler. It's heavy duty. And the important thing is knowing what strength you need in regards to the power that you want the Dewalt to push the stapler at. So the bottom one is the type of staplers that I have in regards to how I pushed it down. Push up and push down buttons is somewhat difficult to push down. As you can see, I struggle a little bit with pushing it down, but it will stay. So the other thing that you'll have to do is you'll have to open up the stapler to put the staples in. And it's pretty simple, there's a little lever that you basically squeeze to pull out and you can put the staples in very simply they'll fit turn them with the ends pointing up and it will fit perfectly with the staples you have to make sure that you definitely get the right staples for the capacity of the d-wall as it has multiple staples that it is able to accept so as you can see i am putting the staples in to the d-wall stapler and what we will do with the staples is staple the front of the cloth that I have and we'll staple it to the back as tight as possible to give the front of the chair look as smooth as we can or as straight as we can without moving the cloth. So what you'll see is we are going to pull the ends lightly enough to give it a smooth look and I am going to begin stapling the chair. It is sort of a meticulous process to make sure that 
the cloth going straight on the chair as straight as possible but also not tugging too much when you are stapling so as you're going to see is I am stapling the front of the cloth to the back portion of the chair again like I said very meticulous you'll see me doing it multiple times at this stage just to make sure the cloth is staying correctly or else if you do staple without making sure that it's as straight as possible and smooth as possible in the front you will end up having to remove all your staples so it's definitely better to get it done right the first time before you even start the stapling process so as you can see I am going to put in the first staple soon I am making sure that it's going to have a smooth look with while pulling very gently onto the cloth enough to give it a smooth appearance while I wait to staple. So I'm just gonna continue to do that. So what I recommend is you stapling one side of the chair and getting it as smooth as possible. And when I'm stapling the other side of the chair, that way the cloth isn't moving as much. So what I'm gonna do is turn the chair around so you guys can get a better view of what I am doing to the other side. Pretty much same thing, giving it a slight pull down and pulling the cloth very lightly as the other side is already stapled in at the top. So I think I've gotten it to the point where I've gotten all the smoothness and straight layout in the front. So what you'll see is I am going to staple the other side after smoothing and making sure that it fits snugly. So what we'll do is now that I am stapling one side, I am making sure that the staple will be covered with the cloth that is draping over the chair and almost touching the floor. And I'm just going to staple the front piece to the back of the chair, close to the base wood frame of the chair. And what I'm going to do is continue to staple the front flap of the chair to the back and make sure that it's as tight as possible as I go from top to bottom. And that helps with preventing any type of flimsiness or lack of smoothness as the goal is to make a high quality end chair and you don't want it very loose at all. So what you're seeing is I am stapling the cloth all the way down to the bottom. And what I'm going to need is some scissors to make sure that I create some flexibility where the cloth tucked into the crevices meets the cloth that will be used for the side portion of the chair. As you can see, I am cutting about one to two inches at most of the cloth just so I can get that flexibility for that flap so I can tease it to fit where the chair meets the leg. As you can see, I am switching to the other side and doing the same thing in regards to stapling from top all the way down to bottom. As you can see, that stapler is playing with me in a sense where not all the staples are making it into the baseboard of the frame of the chair. So what you'll see is that I did have to use pliers and sometimes I have to use a staple removal tool to lift up the staples. So what I'll do again is make a slit on the side and the goal is to make a flat that's no more than one to two inches in length to give you some flexibility in regards to attaching that flap to the bottom of the chair where the leg meets. 
I would take my time with this just because you definitely do want to make sure this looks neat as you will see this portion on the side of the chair. So I'm just measuring it for you guys and I think the total size was two inches. So as you can see, I am trying to get that flap as perfect as possible so that it will fit around the leg of the chair, but underneath so that it's unnoticeable. This process did take a few minutes just to make sure that I got it right. But as you can see, I am using a little bit of folding technique as well at that corner where the cloth meets at that angle on the side where the two chairs pieces meet. And as you can see, I slowed down the video so you guys could see the detail that it took to give it a clean and smooth look as possible for the side. And this was even before stapling, just required a lot of pinpointing how I wanted the look to come out. As you can see, I was able to perfect it to what I wanted it to look like and I began stapling it together to hold it. I hope you guys have been enjoying the video thus far. What I'm going to do is have you guys sit back, listen to some jams, and watch me make this chair. If you guys haven't done so already, please like and subscribe to my channel for more content and DIYs. Also, keep watching to see what the final look looks like.